Yo, what's good, everybody? We are back with another one. It's another episode, Sound On, with your boy, Hollywood. Hey, and today's guest is the very, very funny, talented Emma Wilman, everybody. Yo, she comes from humble beginnings. Now she's the star of the show. Yo, she's the host of a podcast, Secrets Keepers Club, Inside the Closet. She's made her televised debut on the late night show with Stephen Colbert. Yo, she is also a regular on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, and she is on a Netflix special, The Comedy Lineup. Yo, I got all the details in the description down below of all her content. Yo, and if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, and don't forget to smash that like button. I hope y'all enjoy. Live. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Today's guest, sound on Hollywood Hagen. We have the very talented, special stand up comedian, actress. Uh, most recently got involved with podcasting, Secret Keepers Club, Inside the Closet. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to welcome Emma Wilman, also known Thank as. You so much. I appreciate that. I, I'm a woman. Yeah, you are so Thank you. Yeah. You didn't think I was gonna throw that one in there, huh? Yeah, you know how that came about was this there's a comedian from Boston. He lives in New York now. His name's Mayron. And he's like this really over the top guy. He's just like a very like flamboyant, very loud guy, and he was hosting at a comedy club. This yeah. is years ago. And I remember getting off stage, I said, Thank you, good night, Emma Wilman. And he yeah. went on stage and he just started like shrieking. And he was like, oh my God, I thought you said, thank you, good night, I'm a woman. And then I was, you said, I'm a woman. And when he said, and then he was like, ah. And then when oh he said that, goodness. that's when I was like, oh, I'm going to start pretending like people think I say that regularly. And that's, that's where I got amazing. it from. It only happened that, it happened that one time. And he was yeah. just like, so he gave me that. And then I did that. I used to open with that joke for like, ooh, like maybe two or three years. That's hilarious. That that like I've 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 seen a lot of your content. Obviously, I've been like indulging a lot of what you do. It's part of, it's part of my job. Sure. Uh, and that was one of the first things I, I saw. I forget where it was at me. I think it might have been uh, one of your live uh, Stephen Colberts. But yeah. I was like, you you said it so fast, and you said it like right after your name, and I was like, oh yeah, I can see why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, that show was live. Normally they pre-record those. Oh. Like if you were gonna do do it, normally they'll have it's I don't know if it's a couple day delay or what, but yeah. that was live because the first time they filmed it, Bruce Bruce Springsteen was the guest in the episode and oh, he no. went long. So I got bumped. So then oh. which was fine with me, but my mom yeah. was there and she was like, I thought she was gonna be on tonight. Like I told all my friends. And I was like, no, 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 we don't. Yeah, it's all good. That's you know, hilarious. At those type of productions, they'll have like um, PAs that are yeah. a bunch of PAs around you, like being like, mm -hmm. okay, go here, go there, or, you know, sure. helping you out. So the PAs were like, oh, uh, and then my mom was like, well, can't you talk to somebody to get her? And I was just like, <laughs> so then does they your mom, were like, does your, hold on, does your mom really talk like that though? No, or, it's more like, um, it's like what she, her essence feels like. Oh my goodness! Cause what would you talk you about your mother? She doesn't talk like that. But if you talk to her for a little bit, then you'd be like, ah, I get it. You know. You hear like the real like East Coast feel, the little because you, cause you are from Maine, right? I'm from Maine. Yeah, she's from. She grew up in Massachusetts. She's yeah. Okay. She's very like East Coasty feeling, but her eyes. voice is just. I guess I associate her with just. It's not nagging, but it's like aggressive inquiring you know what i'm saying ah got it it's like hilarious she said, I love it. what's going on arizona <laughs> oh, who's that you know what i mean she's like, she's like a lot of questions yeah yeah that's questions. hilarious that's dope they that's dope come back and then i we did do it live so that clip you saw was totally like as i was saying it it was on the yeah. tv we'll, we'll get into that obviously uh more in detail i guess uh but yeah before we do that uh I always like to do this to start off my podcast because I think it's important, right? You know, I consider you an artist, right? What you do is an art. It's crafted. Mm. You work on it. It's something that you do, something that you put your blood, sweat, and tears into, right? Sure. Um, 
And it's always interesting on the background of it, right? How the idea came about, you know, and even as far back as your childhood, right? And sure. you know, uh, you're from uh, Blue Hills, Maine. Yeah, right? that's right. Okay. <laughs> and population of 800 people. So I lie about that. It's it's two thousand, oh, but it's oh, but same thing, same thing, same thing, same thing. So it's, I don't it's, know why I don't know why I lie about but, that. But but it's but it's so small though that like you had like in order for you to learn how to parallel park, you had to go find another car to park around. Oh, you did do a lot of research. <laughs> Yo, yeah, I lost. Yeah, that it. is that, like, that is that is totally true. It was, I mean, it was like we would have to be like okay that was like hard parallel because first of all it shouldn't have been on the test in maine because at least where i was there was no other cars around so we'd have to like wait until there was something going on in town or i'd have to call a friend and be like can you go park so then i'd have to practice parking around right another car and i failed that test six times that's hilarious you so you use six like where, you you use like where you're from and it being like a like a really small town I think that's I think that's actually pretty cool that you do that because I mean there's there's a lot of people that come from, you know, totally different, you know, beginnings, mm -hmm. totally like you know, like culture that I'm sure the culture was just so much different than like the everyday city culture, right? So it's really cool for somebody like you, that's that's one up and coming, uh, you're doing really well at what you do, right? And it just goes to show that you can really find talent from anywhere. Right. So. You know, I, the reason I always say try to I used to always try to start with being from Maine. And one of the I don't know, like, do you do you watch a lot of comedy? Yeah, I've been watching comedy since birth. Oh, nice. So, so I didn't. I, I only started watching like maybe in the past. I mean, like when I was in college is when I started. Yeah. But for me, the hardest part of starting a set, because comedians mm -hmm. like say the same thing a bunch of times. So if a comedian That's comes out and says, oh, this just happened, like it didn't just happen. But yeah. the hardest thing for me, they're just trying to contextualize it. The hardest thing for me Absolutely. is figuring out how to start. So I'll be like, I want to start and set the tone. Mm -hmm. So saying I was from a small town, I was like, oh, this is the reason I would like to start with that is because it would kind of like ground it in a way. Because mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. don't, I don't know if it would just be me in my head, but I'd always be thinking like, oh, I wonder if they're thinking this or that about or do, should I address the, how I look or whatever. Yeah. So saying I'm from a small town would be something that. I noticed people would be like, oh, like, okay. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, it would it was like a soft, it's, you it's, know, you don't want to come out too It's hard. actually, it's the genius, right? I think oh, like, no, 100%. Because appreciate that. Yeah, because I mean, I think the biggest thing when it comes to, to, to comedy, I think as the listener, mm -hmm. it's all about, it's all about how it resonates. And it's all sure. about how, how uh, you know, how they can relate, right? Totally. So when you when you when you when your approach is like, hey, this is me. I come right. from a small town. I'm not from your big city, your big LA or your big New right, York, right. right? They're like, oh, okay. I, right. I feel like, you know, off the top, I's like I can relate with this girl. Right. So and it's trying to be like, oh, I don't think too I don't I don't think I'm too fancy or anything, absolutely. which you know, which is good, but I can't open with that anymore. So I've been yeah. struggling because I, I open with that on the net, I did Netflix 15 and, and um, the Colbert that time. So sure. I, now I'm like, I've been having a hard time finding other stuff to open with. Yeah. So I got to figure it out. And then it's like, it's like, it's like the things that you talk about. So, I mean, just for example, right now, what's going on right in the world, you know, we're, we're all experiencing a lot, man. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, 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 I think a lot of things are starting to get developed and a lot of things are starting to get pushed out into the world of like, you know, what's really been going on. Right. And sure. I think being a comedian, right. It's, it's important for you guys to touch on, on these sort of topics. Right. I, I guess, I could just, yeah, I guess I could just open it up to you. Uh, you know, obviously you're Caucasian, right. Uh, yeah. You, from what I see, yeah, and what I wasn't, and you're like, <laughs> oh. have you ever met someone who looks Caucasian? I mean, I know there's like someone that's me because I had a friend in college who, what, have you ever met someone who I had a friend in college who was um, Caucasian? She had red hair, but yeah. all her brothers and sisters and her parents were black. And I remember she told me that, and I was like, I was in my head, I'm like, okay. And then I saw a picture of her family, and it was for real. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. I mean, I, she I don't still know. was. I don't know. White. Yeah. But it was like a thing. It was, was weird. She, was, was she mixed? Obviously. I, I mean, it was so weird. I didn't. I mean, I say with full respect, weird. I want to be careful using that word, but like, I was like, no. what was her name? Jada. And we became friends later. And it I didn't still didn't ask her too much about it. Like, she wasn't offering it. So I didn't want to be like, so is your mom having a face? Like, it was like, just. You know, she didn't, it would have been up to her to be like, oh, this is the deal. But she was more like, yeah, these are my brothers and sisters. I'm not adopted. I have. And then she like inserted whatever it was called. And she was like, yeah, it's crazy. Because yeah. people say racist stuff to me because they think I'm white. And then I'm like, no, psych. And then I'm uh, psych. You know, psych. But, <laughs> you uh, are. I, am, I am white and my That's parents are white. Hilarious. Uh, I guess, yeah, I, I kind of want to open the, the, the floor up to you and kind of get some of your thoughts. Obviously, you know, from what I've seen, you seem pretty cultured. You know, you mentioned that, mm. you know, you probably grew up with 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 people of color, right? I'm sure you've... You, Not that many, actually. Like, it was... No? I mean, Maine is... So Maine's the whitest state in the whole country. Oh, wow. It's really... But there's... And it's... I think it still is now. It's, it's interesting. There's a big Ethiopian population in Portland, Maine now. Mm-hmm. And my friend in college is Ethiopian. And when we met, she was like, I'm from Maine. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I'm from Maine. And then I was like, "What? Where in Maine are you from?" <laughs> is that, he's like, "Fucking Portland. Ethiopia." But we got trans. We got, you know, I, this is where I I ended up. So in yeah. my hometown, it was almost. I mean, it was it was so it was so it was very 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 white. And then I went to college in Boston, and then I remember. You know, there was something, there's something to be said. I feel like people from Maine, they know that they don't know. Like, mm-hmm. I knew right away, I was like, oh, I don't know, any, I don't know anything. And then I would meet, like, white people from, like, other places that would be like, this is how it is. Like, yeah. racism doesn't exist, or it does exist. And this, they would get very, like, I know, I know. And that's, like, pretty dangerous. So, r- oh, I was 100%. always like, I have no idea. And then, and then I was, I remember it was, like, sophomore, junior year of college is when, and I know learning about this stuff is a privilege because I got to like pick to do it. But mm-hmm. I took this class on like anti-racism. I was in an interracial okay. relationship and I took it to like impress my girlfriend. And I remember <laughs> I, was, like, I went through a phase where I was like, oh, I hate white people are awful. And I was like, mm-hmm. I hate white people. Bah, bah, bah. And then she was like, that's not productive for you to yeah. do. Like people of color don't need you coming up all of a sudden because you had this experience being like, guess what? white yeah. people are problematic like she was mm-hmm. like congratulations that you had that light bulb moment like yeah. go fuck yourself and then i was like oh you know but that was yeah. when i started kind of seeing the 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 white the whiteness that is like integrated into you know it integrates everything in ways you don't oh, even know 100%. Yeah, you don't need, it can't be trusted. Like, cause like when I'm like, okay, if I'm to comment on stuff, I'm like, I can't even be trusted. Cause I don't know all the ways it's like seeped mm-hmm. into my brain. I don't know. Yeah. You know? How do, let me ask you this. How do you feel about the lack of education? You know, I think one of the biggest pushes now yeah. is that I'm against of, it. Just the lack of education. Like, they, like, yeah. you know, school districts picking and choosing how they, how they educate students, leaving certain things in and out. How I do you know. feel about that? I mean, because that's obviously important because a lot of people are in the unknown, right? They're like, right. everything's getting exposed right now. People are just like, what? Like, that, that's that been going on? That's been happening? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's because the, my wife, I mean, bad. I'm again, not, not pro it. Um, yeah. Like, I think it's because it's to keep, it's e- the more um, oppressed people are, then, mm-hmm. and the, then it keeps the people on top on top. Because, like, that's why yeah. they don't teach how capitalism really works in schools because then it's easier for them to capitalize. But like the Absolutely. whitewashing of history. I remember there was this book. Do you ever read The People's History of the United States? People's you History? That? No. I have okay, not. I kind of skimmed it myself. But it, <laughs> but it like a real, like, I mean, I, the the whitewashing of history. And I mean, I, that would probably be maybe one of the first places to start would be getting history accurately presented Real in history. schools, real history. Real history. We're talking like four hundred years back, and 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 above. Right. You know, like I mean, things are starting to pop up on everyone's timelines, and they're like, right. Wait, this happened? Oh, 
this was said. Which you know? is gonna be infuriating too. Like yeah. it's just you know, and I had this moment. Yeah, I was feeling recently where I was like oh, just feeling like so much uh, anger at myself, and then also I was thinking about it too. Like it's not productive for me to be like. I should have done this. I should have done that more mm-hmm. because that's almost like narcissistic. So it's got to be like, okay, just as an action, yeah. I'm going to take moving forward because Absolutely. I do feel like the blood on my hands. Cause I'm like, I should have done mm-hmm. more. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I can't even imagine, uh, I don't know if it's just like my entitlement picturing what I would be like. If all it's going to be so frustrating, I would imagine mm-hmm. to see people all of a sudden realizing this stuff and then to sit mm-hmm. and be civil and be like, Oh yeah, except the thing is, like, yeah. we've been mentioning this. Yeah, and then only forever. now, because people have had the time at home, now it's popping up. Yeah. You know, that's that's, that's, that's exactly what I think what a it lot is. of times communities of color are prone to be more spiritual, too, because it's like just coping with this. It's, it's, from it's, the jump, from being a baby, all of a sudden you have to, you're coping with this human condition of you're, you're privy to the, like, like evilness in a way mm-hmm. that you know the pri- a privilege allows you to be ignorant to too absolutely you're 100 percent correct it's it's, it, it's it's really one of those things where it's like as i mean being an african-american man you know i've dealt with a lot right and it's just people have been crying out for help for know. you know and it, and, to, and for it to get to this point it's it's sad, right? And then yeah. it's also like everyone is in such a vulnerable state, right? And people are just, you know, they they they've kind of had enough, right? Yeah. So it's like all this stuff is getting exposed and 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 kind of put out into the atmosphere to the point where it's just like it's overwhelming to a lot of people, especially right. the people that don't know. Um, but I think it's important to the education piece. I think is extremely important, right? Uh, that goes unsaid. Uh, you sure. talked about you talked about the action, right? You talked about yeah. you know taking that action, and I think that it's cliche, right? But that word action, there's so much that I feel goes behind that word, right? Yeah. And that true action is what the solution is going to be. If we would have taken this action back when we were supposed to, right? We probably wouldn't be at this point. Right. So um, I definitely salute you for for expressing that that you kind of had that unknowingness, wish you wishing you had more of a, a knowledge on that, but actually taking an action. Right. Um, so I think, think that, you know, do you think that like when like if there is I don't know if you're religious at all, but like if there is yeah. going to be some kind of judgment day, if it's going to like like because I do believe in karma, like is this all going to catch up? Like is there like is it? Are, is it well, gonna... it's catching up it's catching, it's catching up to a lot of people up. it's catching up to a lot of people i mean i'm yeah. seeing some of the most random things like people are literally losing their jobs right uh, people I, girls i never would imagine like the most like you know not that there's white is white is white is white there's not necessarily levels to white but say yeah. there were like say where there was like the most beckiest <laughs> of beckies i've there seen is. like Post like, oh my God, Kelly, like, no, no, no. I've seen them, they're posting stuff like, you better recognize your privilege and like deconstruct it from the inside out. Like, otherwise we're not talking. Like, they are posting stuff on Instagram. And I'm like, shit, wow. you know, like, let me yeah. speak to your manager. Boom. Yeah. Let me speak yeah. to your manager about Black Lives Matter now. And yeah. that's getting yeah. posted. So it really has, yeah. you know. Now, let me ask you this. So do you understand uh, what... African Americans mean when they say Black Lives Matter. Okay, I can tell you how I interpret it. Okay. So how I would interpret it would be the way society and people are presenting, the way laws, institutions, and actions are not presenting to value Mm -hmm. Black lives. And so Black Lives Matter is saying, hey, Black Lives Matter, you've forgotten the most basic element of... Because mm-hmm. to say my life matters is mm-hmm. such a fundamental. Mm-hmm. It's such a fundamental thing. It's mm-hmm. not. It's not saying my house matters, my bank account matters. It's like, hey, my life matters, and the way mm-hmm. that everything is conducted right now, I have to say this because everything is presented that my own life doesn't matter. Mm. So it's like my life matters. Yeah. 
then there's been some re- that's the way I always understood it and then there's been some yeah. really good breakdowns of people being like like yeah. I just saw someone say like I forget how they did it but it was like if someone's house is on fire and then yeah. someone says all houses matter you're like yeah but my yeah. house is on fire so then yeah. that is that is like a good way to like like a like a layman's term of it or a simple way to yeah. kind of break it down yeah, yeah but that's how I always under uh, yeah that's how I understood it well, to make it simple or easy for you, so like all lives matter, right? Like period, right? And with all lives comes equality, unity, you know, togetherness, right? Right. But the way things have been panned out over the years, we've been outside of that circle of all right. lives. Right, So exactly. black lives matter as well. Right. Or right. black lives matter too. Mm-hmm. Right. We want to be. We want to feel like we're a part of that circle of of equality and unity, right? And it's been right. a lack of that. So that's all that is. Like when when people say that, they're not saying it in a way where where it's like Black Lives Matter and nothing else. Right, right. now, we feel, <laughs> right now, you see, but right now we feel like all lives matter and Black lives don't. Right. Exactly. We want to be. A, we want to be part of that circle. That's right. that's that's literally what people that's what they're that's that's the chant that's the movement, right? So, yeah, I appreciate well, that. Yeah, that's I mean that's really like to just to really dumb it down. Mm-hmm. That's the easiest way to explain it. If someone is ever like, what is that? What does all li- Black Lives Matter mean? It just means that we want to be included in this in this this world of equality that that Why we preach. People get so angry. I mean, obviously it's it's racism, and then it's also. It's the um, it's it's uh, it. de- being defensive, not getting it. Yeah, but even if it was like person to person, if someone said, if someone just just two people, someone goes, "Hey, my life matters." Yeah. The knee jerk reaction wouldn't be like, "Well, my life matters." You'd be like, "Well, why are you saying that?" So it just yeah. seems like so it's like, "Hey, obviously you've got other stuff going on." If your 100%. response to that is so triggered, because it yeah. like just doesn't, no. it's like it's like look, okay, clearly something else is going on because. You yeah. wouldn't, you know, a one-on-one thing, if you were mm-hmm. like, if, yeah, if someone said that, for them, just, you'd get all mad, you'd be like, what the fuck tipped that off? Yeah, so it's, it's, it is a, interesting. it's a, it's an act on emotion. It's an act on emotion yeah. and, like, past experiences that they don't want to bring up. But I did do, ba- I have done, like, really bad stuff before. Like, I remember when I yeah. first started learning about this stuff, oh, yeah. I remember I signed up for this class. Yeah. I signed up for an Africana Studies class. So I African, Ameri- in. African American studies. It was called Africana studies, but yeah, yeah. African. That's what it was called, Afri- Africana, at Simmons Africana. College. That's what they called it. So if they're getting the verbiage wrong, that's on them. But <laughs> I remember, I remember going into the class, mm-hmm. and we had this like workshop, and uh, there was a white woman in the workshop, and mm-hmm. and she said she was like, you know, white people can't be trusted. And, yeah. and I remember, and I was only one of a few, I think I was one of a few white people in the class, and I got really mad. And instead was of it, listening. Was, what, was the teacher was the teacher black or was the teacher white? The teacher was, oh, God, her name was Donna Thomas. Hmm, that could, she be, that, was, that could be. She was a person of color, but she wasn't black. She um, was probably she, a mix. She was probably a, a mix. <laughs> you said mix. I thought you just said she was probably a bitch. I was like, no, she was. She was <laughs> yeah, bitch. I'm like, nah. I mean, I, I would never, she's pretty I would nice. Never. I would never. She's probably a bitch. She was really nice, but <laughs> and she was. She handled me the right way because I I was very problematic in my response. I remember. I remember she, that she said that she goes, you know, because it was about like at building bridges. Mm-hmm. So, you know, she said, basically, if a white person comes in and they say, I want to be an ally, she ba- the white woman said, basically, don't trust them because mm-hmm. their whiteness will might come out at some point, like trust them in limited amounts. Sure. Now I see what she's saying. Yeah. But at the time, I got like, pissed. I went, like, what? I was like, how could you say that? You know, and then I did yeah. something, which now I'm like, oh, I took up a lot of space in the room. I was mm-hmm. like, hey, 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 how can she say that? Like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, what yeah. does that to me? She's supposed to be a teacher. She's the blah, 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 blah. And, I, and yeah. then I remember a couple people in the class were like, I see what you're saying. Yeah. And then I went to the teacher and I was like, how could she say that? And she was mm-hmm. like, she, she put me in my place about it. Mm-hmm. But so I, was do, I would do very pro, like, problematic things like that. You know, I was, yeah. ma- 
was making it about me is what it was. Yeah. You know, there's a whole point of a conversation. Everyone else is already way past that. But then mm-hmm. I'm in the class basically being like, hold on. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then I was lucky enough that, you know, the teacher was like, but I got to have that experience because mm-hmm. I went, I got to go to college and I got to. Absolutely. And also, and there was a personal, I think it is important too. It was like, because I, it was like I had a personal tie in to it because of my relationship. It wasn't like. It wasn't like I, before I was in that situation, I wasn't like out of the goodness of my heart, like, oh, I need to go learn about this. It, yeah. That's just happened. And that's part of the privilege, too. Like, uh, I was, I just kind of fell into it and oh, then kept up with it because it's the truth. But it's like, that's how hidden it is in, that's how hidden it is in trying to, like, learn about, oh, my mic just cut out. I can still hear you. Oh, good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, no, it's it's but, really it, yeah, it's 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 a it's a lack it's a lack of a lot of things. Education yeah. is one of the biggest things, but it's really a lack of a lot of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I appreciate yeah. your insight on that. I think you know it's yeah, definitely it's, it's definitely a, yeah, it's a sensitive topic. It's it's a global topic at this point, right? You know, you got people in Paris, Germany, all sorts of different places around the world that are understanding. Right, and I what think too they gonna happen. As far as what, just like how do you how do you think it'll keep going, or what do you think will? I think there's gonna be a lot of uh, organizational, uh, governmental. Uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of different approaches. You know, I know the whole defunding thing is like really mm-hmm. going into place. Min- uh, Minneapolis just put that to to uh, to action. I think a lot of corporations or bigger corporations are going to start making a stand. You know, I think there's going to be. I know. A, yeah. yeah I, think I saw that. Because someone I was like, be- oh, yeah. Like it was like banks are doing it, but it's like you're the same. But that's the thing where it gets tricky if you dwell too much. I don't know. It's, whew, it's, no, it's, go- it's going to be a lot. Of, it's going to be a lot of uh, uh, non toleration. Right. You know? Like, there's not going to be a, a happy medium of, like, what's racist and what's not racist. Like, right. they're, they're going to nip it right. in the butt before it even be. Because because now I think that, like, now I think that when anything from, a like, a racial uh, situation, perspective, act, or whatever, I think it's going to be blown up right. to another proportion at this and point. And also, a happy medium is definitely something that, like, white people will be, like, bartering for. Because yeah. they'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, like, there's we no gotta happy talk medium. about this! There's no, right. there's no exactly. in-between. There's no right. in-between. Like, right. they're cutting it out. Period. Right. Like, right. there's gonna be no toleration for it. Right. Like, I think it's gonna be one of the biggest things that, like, we're gonna focus on probably for the next three to five years until there's, like, until people start coming out and really noticing a true change. Yeah, and I think white people have to see the buy-in for them, too, to do the right thing. Because I I truly wonder, I'm like, do you know what that means to give up that privilege? If you do, you don't even know all the ways that you've got it. Because then you'd be, you know, it's going to be, and then it's like the human condition of, because people kind of want to pull on to unearned benefits that they don't have to have. Like, what's the, Mm -hmm. the backlash and it's... It really is an incredible, and I think I think too. I think too for ex- especially the larger corporations, it's going to come down to cons- consistency, right? Yes, uh, uh, of them Absolutely. of them coming out right now, but not it being a moment for them to capitalize. Totally, totally, you know what I'm saying? totally. Yeah, I think like the capitalization point on like on something like this is easy to do. So if yes. you don't st- if you don't stand by your word and your word's not bond. Totally. We will come right back to it. Yes. We will come right back to your little Instagram post. Right. We will come right, right back to your your Amazon right. screenshot. You know what I mean? Right. Like you totally. will get exposed. You're gonna get exposed. Right. right. I mean, I, I think that's so. It's gonna be a a true plan of action. Like people are gonna right. be paying close attention. You know. Yes. Yeah, and it really is about the consistency is key. That's 100%. where the like the consistency of because like if I because you know also I've been trying to think okay I need to look at myself in it because so many people are like I'm just talking like white people I can speak to that because that's what my experience is will be like this person to this and this person to that I'm like well why don't we start with what you did wrong 
And then we yeah. can work from there because these, because then you can really see how nuanced this is. So I go look sure. back and say, I did, this was not right. You sure. know? <sighs> yeah. No. Yeah. You're 100% right. I think too, it's going to start. Uh, I've been having from, nightmares. Yeah. Yeah. I this one. I keep reliving this one thing that's going to confront yeah. me if I'm going to go to heaven. I was in a taxi <laughs> one time. Uh -huh. And this taxi guy, he was taking me on a ride around New York. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was like all pissed because I was like, hey, this isn't the right way. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get like, I was really mad. And mm -hmm. I couldn't tell what ethnicity he was. Like, I thought he was maybe Indian, but I couldn't tell. And I, then all of a sudden I was like, I want to see what this guy is. So I started like yeah. reaching my head around the front because I wanted to be like, this yeah. insert purse type of person can't drive. And I wanted mm -hmm. to do that, which is racist. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out what he was. Yeah. And he had um, juju bees on his front seat, like you know. The, <laughs> the, so I go, the, this the juju bee eating guy. These people that like juju bees can't drive. Okay. Yeah. So by the end of the ride, I kind of caught up with myself, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh my god, like that was racist. But it was yeah. like pure just anger and me looking mm -hmm. at something to be like, you know, I felt powerless. Because I'm in mm -hmm. his car. So I'm like, but it shows, and this is, it shows like how insidious this is. Like, it's like yeah. coming into your brain. It's your, my, and I, oh, I, 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 I keep I, having I, like, think, I think that, that. that the biggest thing with that, I, I, I feel like I do it really well is to really sit there and think about what you're going to say before you say it. Yeah. Like, it, it's really, oh, it's that's really good to do that cliche. Well. That's a gift. It's, it, it's like really cliche, but like, it takes a lot to act um, off like true thought and not act yes. off like or act off anger. I think a lot of people oh, act absolutely. off anger, fear, you know, like just impulsive emotion. Like I think oh, that totally. like if you really sit there and be like, okay, will it be a good idea if I said this? Like, oh you know, yeah, totally. But, but like, I feel like people have no, like there's a lot of people out there that really don't have a filter. Right. And it's just like, sure. you know, they'll say careless and just, you know, out of the line things. And it's just like, you say that we're, when you say that we're going to, if I don't know you, I'm going to go based off what you just said to me. Right. Right. Total. Of course. Right. So if you come at me in, in a racial matter, in a racial way or action, and, and even if you're not a racist, that's what I'm going to insinuate you are. Of course. Right. Right. So I think it's very important, especially with, with, with like real time, interaction i think mm -hmm. it's, it's key to really think about what you say before you say it because people take what you totally. say not for a grain of salt they take it and they think the big the, the whatever it is that you you present it that's what they're gonna that's what they're gonna take so that totally. guy in the taxi oh he's probably like oh this this well, he never said anything total but he was thinking right. that. oh so, yeah he because i'm sure he saw me he saw yeah. me cooking around trying to yeah but yeah it's, the power, I feel like you're never going to regret taking a pause. Like you're mm -hmm. never going to regret being calmer. You're, yeah. and you're very likely going to be happy with doing something out of anger. Like okay. very, like, what are you going to, you're never, you're never going to regret coming at something from a place of understanding. You know, that's, you're never going to be like, fuck, I wish I was a lot more hot headed in that yeah. situation. Like that's never going to happen, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And I mean, it's, it's really, it's really that simple. Like I You've always been calm like that. Y yeah. I mean, <laughs> calm in the sense of like, like being aware. Mm -hmm. Oh, 100%. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just my background and like how I was raised. My grandmother, she's really spiritual, religious. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, there's some things that she's taught me that, that I've learned at a long, at a young age that, that I've applied to my life every single day. Sure. And it's, 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 it's treated me well as far as like interacting with people. Right. So like, right. Why change that? It's working. Right. And that, that's Absolutely. just, yeah, that's just what I do. I don't, I don't, I don't speak out of spite. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? I don't speak oh, out yeah, of spite. Oh yeah, what you're saying. But that's I such, speak. that's such a, that's a very rare thing. Yeah. It's, I especially now with social media, when people are used to being like, just firing things off, firing. you know? I don't so so I don't I'll back it up like this. I don't speak out of spite. I I I speak uh afterthought. Wow. That's what I do. 
to sum it up. Like I speak, I, I, I like self thought though. Like, like, you know, I think of, you have to think about what you say, we're going to say it. That's why I don't get into those encounterments of, of arguing with the dude at the gas station or arguing with the right. dude at the, at the grocery store or right. saying something outlandish where everybody in the store is looking at me like, who's this crazy black dude? Right. You know, right. he's this, he's that. I don't give people an opportunity to say those things about me right. because I'm, I'm one, I'm aware and uh, the self-thought of what I'm going to say before I say it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I haven't been good about this recently, but there was a while and it was really helpful where I was before yeah. I would go to bed, I would go, OK, if there's anything I got angry about today, wherever yeah. I was wrong, I need to admit it to myself or to someone else. And that was a really good exercise to do. So, and then, also, right. yeah, exactly. And to look at why I, why I would be mad at something, because it usually comes down to fear. I go, okay, sure. I got mad at this person because I'm scared that uh, they were going to take this from me, or I assumed that this. And normally, you don't know what's going on. You're you're projecting, like you're mind yep. reading, you know. So 100%. that's something that I would. That's, I haven't been doing it recently, but it was very more, helpful. Do more of that. I mean, I honestly, yeah. I think self, I, I think self talk, self development, uh, self reflect. I think that's all good because at the end of the day, it's like, yo, it's like, yo, what did I do to better myself from yesterday, right? And it's like, yeah. but that starts with you though, right? Like, yes. You know, even if it's like, even if you're like you said, you're before you go to bed at night. You know, it, right. it, it, it's 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 kind of a spiritual thing where it's it's like you have to talk to yourself because you know yourself more than anyone, right? The, the the things that you did right and the things that you did wrong throughout that day, you know that to its full capacity. No one else right. does. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I do it myself, right? I think about the things that I can do to better myself. I think about the things that, you know, maybe I failed on and, and what I can change. And I, I think I need to do a lot more of that. People just have to be real with themselves. Like, yo, like, that the the girl that I that I was on the bus with on the way to work, I probably shouldn't have did that, you know. What you do? No, I'm just saying that that I was right, speaking right, in right. general, right? Yeah, like but like you know, I gotta better myself, and we have right. to better ourselves. I think as a nation, as a, like as a world globally, sure. I think, you know, people are we just live in a world where it's like they do the things that are easy to do, but they don't do the things that are hard to do. Oh yeah. And then that's fueled by, and that's fueled by all these messages we get all the time. Eat this, buy this right now, get this. Yeah. Now I'm going out on a limb here, but I bet you make a lot of healthy food choices. I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm a, I'm a man by habit. That's so like that's one thing. That's so like the the whole self talk, uh, being aware and things that I do. Everything is merely off habit, and (sighs) I. And and I promise you, like, it sounds crazy. No, it doesn't sound crazy at all. It's like the more you do something, the more effortlessly it is for you. I and know. I don't care what if you what have bad is. habits? Because I got Stand habits up, that are easy, but they're not, man. but they're bad habits. And, and it just stems from consistency. Yeah. Like, I mean, even like with being healthy and, and, and all that, like, you know, it, it, it's just something that I do. By se- it's a, it's a, it, I do it by a second nature. I don't even think mm-hmm. about it. You know what I mean? I don't, it's not something that I'm like trying to go off on a limb for, you know? So that's a gift. That's a yeah. real gift you've given yourself in cultivating that. Because I would yeah. say, like, at least 20% of my day is like, I gotta be healthy. I gotta be healthy. And then yeah. I'm like, oh, I want a donut. Like, it's like, <laughs> a constant, like you know, thing. I'll go live with you too whenever you want. I I trust you. I wasn't sure what I think, I, I, no, I trust you if you want to go 100%, 100%, live. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. But I think we're past the stage of 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 the censorship. We're gonna get more into the childhood and oh, we're gonna yeah, get more you, into and everything you want. else. Uh, yeah, we'll get right. Yeah, we'll get right into it then. Yeah, we're going live, baby. All right. We are going live. Oh, I God. am a woman. Oh God. Oh God. I wish I could still do that joke. Actually, that was a good. It was on point. It stood yeah, up. Yeah, that was a good opening joke. I'm, I'm a real, uh, not a critic. I hate using the word critic, but like I'm, uh, how do I say this? Uh, Connoisseur. I take, yeah, I take it pretty serious. Like, I mean, growing up, that that was like the Def Jam comedies, 
the kings sure. of comedy like that's i like saw kings of comedy in the movies as a little child like really? you know my what girl, i mean my girlfriend <laughs> met cedric the entertainer he's one of my favorite comics actually man he's so funny because he's just puts on such a show like he's truly an entertainer you know i don't think there's anybody that has a better cigarette uh right. a cigarette like um segment than he does yeah with this with he's hanging so off the bottom lip like nobody does that better than cedric like he's the goat for that like he's I such a funny him. little man and like i feel Bernie, like i can just like watch him do anything rest in peace bernie mac i know that is the goat of all goats i mean i love that man he i felt like he was one of those comedians and even when he acted in movies he was truly himself. I don't really sure. think that there was too much script. He was almost like like a Denzel Washington. For or even if there was too much script, he was such a good actor, he made it seem like there wasn't. It wasn't. So it made it seem true. That's when someone's a really good actor, when, you, yeah. when you're like, that's not from a script. Like, yeah, yeah. whether it was or it wasn't, that's like yeah. good. That's good acting. Yeah. Let's do I go, so do yeah, I go live? Do you I just go your... live? You go live and then I'll I'll, uh, I'll send you a request. All right, let's see. Boom. Why the um uh okay I haven't gone live in about a, a week. You're not a what do I? I think you hit on your page. You hit on your uh your actual page, and then you slide left, I believe. Or you slide right. Oh, yeah, thank you. Know, you. Or something like right. that. <laughs> I'm still getting you. I went on a hiatus for like 18 months. Oh, good then, for you. Then I, then I got back into it with a purpose, and this is my purpose. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So yeah. I've been. Um, I haven't done it in a little so bit. Do I, do I What's going on, guys? I'm going live with, with Hollywood. Hollywood. Wait, I don't have it on me. You got to put the <laughs> emphasis. You got to put the emphasis. Okay. Hollywood. I got it. Oh, wait. Here we go. I'm about to look like shit. There we go. What's up? Oh, all oily. All right. Here we go. This is my buddy, buddy Hollywood Hagen. There we go. Let's go. Oh, boy. Whoo. Nothing like. Uh, mm. Live. So I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing his. There we go. What's up, guys? Oh, I'm a guest. Up? I'm a guest on Hollywood. Should I keep the Skype on? Could should you what? You want me to keep the Skype on because there might or just switch it to no, Instagram. Yeah, no, yeah. We're gonna keep the Skype. No, we're gonna keep you the could Skype. just turn the volume down. Turn the volume down. All right. What's up, people? Oh, live. We're live. Okay, let me turn the volume right, down. There. What's up? How you guys doing? So he was just telling me about how he is healthy by habit. Healthy by habit. Look, you have to be, look, so the reason why you got to be healthy by habit, because being healthy by habit creates a different sort of mindset for you, right? Like, like I'm telling you, like, so with being healthy by habit comes with consistency, uh, comes with, like, no hesitation in your process, right? But, and that's yeah, with, that's but cultivating with those habits are really hard because yes, it it's like, it's like working against the, I forget what, who said this. It was another comedian I was talking to from a book he read. That's usually how I get, if someone reads a book, it gets like passed down, passed down. But yeah. he said that a habit is like, yeah. it's like you're like trying to carve, it's something you've carved into the wood, just creating that habit. Then you put a marble and it goes down where you've carved it. And then trying to create a new habit is carving a different little scent thing to that. And so it's having the marble go down a different, a different chunk of the wood. And that's because you've been, you've car so you've carved in your healthy habits. I've carved in, you know, eating too much pudding at night, uh, uh, wanting to drink if I'm angry. Like, time out, time out, time I... out. You eat pudding? Yeah. Oh, that goodness. Bad? That's your problem. If you're, if you're going to eat something uh, unhealthy, at least, at, least, at, least ha at least have it be good. Pudding's pretty good. That, if you think pudding? the pudding, you think pudding's oh, bad. Pudding if, I'm gonna, if I'm if I if I'm gonna do a cheat meal, if I'm gonna cheat to eat something, pudding would be the very last thing that I choose. Are you serious? Absolutely. Pudding you mentioned a, a donut. You mentioned a donut earlier. I mean, I definitely eat a donut before I eat some pudding. I can't believe some eat some good food. 
I pudding's pretty healthy. Like it's like um, it's just, oh. I'll eat the sugar. It's because you know it's portion controlled in the cup. I put eat the sugar free pudding, and then I put some like Cool Whip on it. Portion, portion control. Food. Let's let's talk about that. What what okay. is portion? Because it's like in a pre, it's a pre in a pre packaged cup, so then it's like you know done out for you. So you know exactly how much you're getting servings, calorie count. Exactly. Uh, you know exactly how many sh sugars, right? Carbs. So right. that that gives you the insinuation that it's healthy. Oh, I love snack packs. Snack packs. Uh, putting from the usually I'll get a someone asked putting from refrigerator section or in the snack aisle. Usually from the refrigerator section. The refrigerator. I mean, section. I didn't go down the refrigerator go section. Down the <laughs> it's usually it's usually like frozen nuggets, frozen, nuggets. Uh, frozen curly yeah. fries, curly fries. Dry, dryer oh, yeah. ice creams. These are the these are the foods that you like as a like a cheat. No, you uh, want to know what you, what do I like as a cheat? What do I, like I, love like, I love hot chips. I love hot chips. What's that? What I is like, the average day for you like like, like in in your healthiness? Average day as far as like consumption. Probably like 80 20. 80 20. No, okay. probably like, probably like 80, like, like 80, 80, maybe 10 or less than 10. Okay. So I'll have those urges where I like, so I'll randomly, like, I'll randomly, like, like, yo, like, I need spicy. something like spicy. I don't want sure. I don't want Mexican. Right. I, don't want Mexican. Right. I want some hot chips, like some, some flaming hot Doritos or something. Yes. <laughs> oh, I do put chia seeds in my pudding. You better, no, not in the pudding, but I'll put it in a, I'll put it in a, you know, I, I, I like that. I like that mindset of have the unhealthy thing and then just no, add something healthy to it. No. You put chia seeds in like your Chobani yogurt or something like that. I'll do that sometimes too. I mean, I just never really, I've always been someone, I just never, do, I'd say my, the healthiest habit I have is if I get, is taking a walk. Like if I'm, That's if I feel like something, I feel really habit. overwhelmed, I'll be like, I need to take a walk and then I'll take, I'll pace around. So let's talk about this. So you grew up as a kid, right? Uh, you grew up as a child. Everybody grew up as a kid, yeah. obviously. <laughs> I guess that was like a, a, a terrible way to, inter to introduce no, I that. Got you. I got you. you understand. Uh, right. And uh, I love you. one, one, you, I mean, you talk about it a lot. You, you had a speech impediment. You, you suffered from dyslexia. I didn't right? have a speech impediment, but I oh. did suffer from dyslexia. I d definitely, I'm and dyslexic you still and do? ADD. And you still do, right? Or no? Yeah, dyslexia doesn't go. I mean, someone wrote on my an Instagram post I did the other day where they were like, "Call me, I cured dyslexia." Um, I don't know about that, but I mean, you can. You there's definitely ways to. It's like with ADD. I think there's ways to curb it. Like I know, um, I wouldn't even know how. I haven't looked into it too much, but there's ways to make it better for you. But with dyslexia. Um, I think I was diagnosed when I was in like third or fourth grade, I would say. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you talk about it, you know, a little bit, but you also talk about uh, being overweight as a child. Yes. Oh, okay. somebody said I need to get my chakras in order. That's the truth. What? Let me my see. Chakra, what did chakra is, um, it's like your energy. It's like your, like, do you ever do acupuncture? I, I haven't, but I need to. It's really great, but your a chakra is like your energy fields. Okay. Um, sorry, I get this. I get distracted by the little pop ups. You no, know, no, 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 no. I think on, it's I, um, no. We're live, so we Skype. these are these are all your fans. We got to pay attention to them. So yeah, yeah I gotta get my chakra. Comment it up. Drop a comment. And dyslexic solidarity, I appreciate that. I just all did. Right. I interviewed Jesse Jollis on Emma's my podcast, Emma's Bunker, and. It was really healing, actually, to talk to her about what it was like being a dyslexic kid, because there's so many things I kind of just pushed down, yeah. you know, kind of forgot about. And talking to someone else who had those same things was very, was therapeutic. I love that. It's all yeah. about, it's all about finding ways uh, to, I guess, uh, dwell with things, sure. right? And I feel like you you're doing that to this day, right? Yeah. So trying. since we're on since since we're on health, right? So you grew up as a you grew up as a child that was that was quote unquote overweight or yes. bigger bigger than most kids. Yes. Right. And you 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 feel I mean I'm I'm assuming that you felt like an outsider, right? You felt yeah. like you were totally different from everyone else. You you dealt with, you know, probably mental and physical issues. And mm. 
what you do now, I feel like it, it acts as an escape, right? Um, I've seen I've seen that you've uh, you've expressed that. Definitely. How did you so growing up as a child? How did you get out of that mode? You know, obviously, you, you know, you've you've done some of the right things, right? So you've experienced what it is to to create a habit, stay consistent with a habit, recognize results, yeah, love results, and then go right back to that same habit, yes, and that same yes. consistency, right? Yeah. So let's talk yeah. about that a little bit. You know, I definitely have noticed a very big separation between a work habit and a personal habit. So if it's a habit that's productive for work, I'll cultivate it like, oh, thank you about my eyebrows. I appreciate that. My, if it's something I that, it, oh, someone's popping? in my eyebrow. So they said your eyebrows look good. And then I took the compliment. Hey, right um, with that. I, uh, if it's a work habit, then I will, I'm, I treat that much differently than it's like something that would be healthy for me. Even things that are healthy for me are often based on how will it affect work. But you have to do it, I've found, in a way that's healthy. If you do it for any other reason than just trying to be good to yourself, it'll crumble pretty quick. Because there's a lot of times I tried to quit drinking where I was like, I got to stop drinking because it's affecting work stuff. And then it, and it wouldn't last. And then when I was like, okay, I need to drink, stop drinking because it's affecting all areas of my life. And then finding things to like supplement in there, that's when I was able to do it, you know, Lord willing or whatever, but yeah. I, I mean, there's not, there's, I have very few things that I have like as part of like a daily routine. Like I'll wake up, get on my phone, start going, mm-hmm. start muttering, get coffee, get, get my ADD pills, do my Your eyebrows. Habits. What's up? Your yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, I, or I'll, and I try to exercise a couple times a week. Like I try to be pretty healthy, but I, I think that as a kid, I mean, I'd say the healthiest habit I had as a kid was trying to prioritize like friendships. That was like, like I was like a very like social kid. I don't know if that was healthy though. That's absolutely I, healthy. Yeah. Well, I, I smoked a lot of pot with those friends, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I love it, but I did. Shout out to Emma. <laughs> yeah. Thank the you. The coolest yeah. kid on the block. The coolest right. kid, the, the coolest kid in Blue Hills. Like yeah. Have you, oh what's God. the most rural place you've been? Or are you from the country or more uh, city area? Oh, I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a city, I'm a city boy. Um, but I do appreciate uh, small towns. I appreciate uh, outskirts. Yeah. Um, I love road trips. I love Thank stopping you. by at certain places. Yep. Um, but small towns, I, the reason why I appreciate them so much, because I think that it, it stems from a lot of culture. Mm. I feel like there's always a lot of a lot going on. And as far as like the population of people, I feel like, you know, you have different sorts of conversations. People are like extra yes. welcoming. They appreciate you for, you know, stopping in if you're not from yes. there. They're super curious. That mm-hmm. that all that whole little thing is like it's a vibe to me. It's a super vibe. People saying that's so true, especially um the appreciate you stopping in. I mean, like there's so many times I remember in my town you know, there's a couple stores. So there's like, there's the grocery store and then there's the food co-op, which was like the like healthy grocery store. There's a couple restaurants. And then there was this one like general store. And I always used to go to the general store and get lunch. And I remember I'd hear like the clerk say, if it was someone from out of town, if they came in, they go, Hey, thanks for stopping in. Like that's something. A big whole announcement. It's a big whole announcement. And if you know, (laughs) if someone, this is how small it is though. I remember I had a friend, Alicia, in college, and she came to visit Maine. And we stopped in at the general store, and she wanted to get a sandwich. And the person making the sandwich just goes, well, if you want to get a sandwich, you have to eat one of our pre-made sandwiches. And she goes, well, I don't want one. I want one without mayonnaise. And the woman goes, well, we can't sell, we can't sell any specialty sandwiches until we get rid of the pre-made sandwiches, because otherwise we don't have enough people buying the sandwiches. And she was like, oh. cool, cool, cool. I don't care. I'm the customer. <laughs> I'm right. And the woman was like, and I had to be like, no, 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 that's not how we do it in Maine. Like, that's not how we do it. You gotta, we got to get some mayonnaise and put it on the sandwich. And she was like, what is this fucking oh, twilight oh podunk town that you can't? Twilight. And I was like, that's not how the sandwich system works. You got to yeah. gotta eat the pre-made ones. That's how small it is. It is. Everything is like, it is is set in stone. Yeah, it is set in, it is set in <laughs> people do appreciate people stop and buy, but I mean, my town, so I told you that I lied and would say it was 800, it's really 2,000. 
I got to work on this project in a town of 500 people. Okay. And that was smaller than I ever even, you know, that other 1,500 people makes a big difference. I mean, mm-hmm. this town had, and I'd seen pictures of this place before. What town? It's called Somerville, Somerville, Maine. Ooh. It's real. It's it's really <laughs> sounds like it sounds like a like a city and like a like a like a tombstone a tomb a tombstone like movie. Yeah, like they a, had a general store that sold um, they sold guns, wedding dresses, and beer in the general store. Oh, um, Isn't okay, that, that, about, that about that about sums it up. Mm-hmm. Say less. Right, and they were, <laughs> I remember someone was like, "Yeah, they're really nice wedding dresses," and. Maybe they are. That's hilarious. So, so okay. Before we get into, I mean, before we get into like your career and some of the things that you've sure. done, which you know, to all your fans, I'm sure they know exactly what it is. But we'll dive more into detail about you know the real experience behind it. Uh, but congratulations to to you. you. We talked a lot about Simmons College, right, in Boston, mm-hmm. uh, the New York School in New York City, right. Yeah, the new, it's called, I wish it was called the New York School. It's called the New School. Hi, Megan. Oh, yeah, the New School. I, That's I the name. Totally it's add, confusing. I totally, I totally it's added, very confusing. I just added to York because I thought it, I don't know. It's well. in New York, but the New York School would be a better name than the New School because people are like, yeah, we know it was a new school. Where did you go to school? And you're like, no, that, the name of the school is the New School. The New School is not a very good name for a school. And that, and that's where you received your master's? It is, yeah. Oh, nice. You took a class at Simmons? I, I peaked. Oh, oh, Simmons was the best out. time of my life. Shout out. Honest. Who's that? Melinda? Melinda. Shout, Melinda yeah, Mark. I loved taking a class at... I, she, I mean, I love Simmons. She's a part of your journey. <laughs> and then you went to... Did you go to George Stevens Academy? That's where I went to high school. Yeah, so I went to high oh, school, okay. and that's in Blue Hill. So I went from Blue Hill to Simmons... And then I was in, then I went to the new school. Then I went back to Boston after I graduated. Then I went back to New York. Okay. That was kind of the trajectory. So you, so you finished up school there. What did you go to school for? So for undergrad, I went to school for philosophy and communication. And then for grad school, I went to, sorry, my, um, for grad school, I went for, for media studies. But by the time I was in grad school, I was so focused on comedy. I wasn't like. I wasn't like, hey, Eli. Shout out to Eli. Uh, Eli and I went to Simmons together, actually. But um, oh, you went to Simmons time- with Eli too? Yep, that's my buddy. But everybody from Simmons is in here. I love it. But but I uh, didn't. By the time I was in, um, by the time I was at the new school, I was so focused on comedy. Like I wasn't. Mm-hmm. I really didn't. It, the when I did it, it was I was trying to give myself a reason to be in New York. And not fully admitting to myself that I wanted to do comedy was what I wanted to do. But I looked like. What was that moment that you knew you wanted to do comedy? Was there like a real life like experience? Yeah, I knew I wanted to do it from the first time I did it. But but I didn't understand like the ins and outs of it as uh, a business. I mean, I had an idea of it and I was always very like interested in that, but I didn't, you know, especially when I was going to school for media studies and you're looking at the construction of celebrity because celebrity is a social construct it's a Mm -hmm. constructed reality so i remember thinking in simmons it was very like race class gender intersection of these constructed realities oh oh we construct these things celebrity is a facet of that too but Mm -hmm. then i started seeing all of the mechanisms that go into that and i was doing these after prom shows with um thank you about the podcast. I was doing these after prom shows with Pete Davidson. Have you heard, you heard of Pete Davidson? Yeah, yep, yep. So this is like years ago. SNL, so, right? Yes. So so I'm doing these after prom shows with him and then Nick Cannon signed him to his oh. uh, management Dope. thing at the time. It was called... Yeah, yeah. I don't remember Nick, what it was. Nick Cannon's management? <laughs> Probably. So, <laughs> something cliche. Something like that. So he... And then I remember thinking like, because I was studying entertainment business, so I started learning about age, and I started being like, oh, it's very sexist and racist and homophobic and cl- and all these things. And then yeah. when I saw Pete get signed to something, I started thinking, oh, he's so young, I'm never going to make it. So I sure. quit performing for like a year, and people would wow. ask me about that. And then I, I said once, I was like, well, you know, Pete Davidson, he got all this stuff, and they were like, you think that you're, you and Pete Davidson are canceling each other out? Like, you don't, you think that, 
someone's going to not have you for something because they pick Pete Davidson. They're like, you two are not competing. Like you're only competing mm. with yourself. And hearing someone else say that made me realize like how psychotic wow. that was that I was like about. So you, so you quit a whole year because you thought that, that your competition was Pete Davidson, but in reality, your competition was yourself. Oh yeah. I mean, it but was, it took it was some, it took somebody to tell you that. that. It, it, yeah. But it, it, it takes someone mirroring that insane thought to be like, that's who you're letting under your skin. And he's he's a nice guy. He was a really great yeah. Tom. Yeah. He's great. But I started seeing him just like skyrocket. Yeah. So then that made me be like, oh shit, what am I doing? You know? <laughs> well, what are you doing? Let's talk about what you are doing, right? So yeah. you've been in the game two years, two, two, two to three no, years. Probably or like long. eight or nine years, I would say. Yeah. Eight or nine? Oh, well, I yeah, guess I mean, my first Colbert stats. was for, I mean, maybe it was closer to like six or seven or eight. I mean, my first Colbert was four years ago. And then my second one was two years ago. Okay, I guess it, I guess it must have been an old article. That's yeah, what, it must have okay. been. I mean, so we're, yeah, it definitely was 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. So let's let's start. Let's start at that then. Right. So you you take you take that year off. Right. Mm -hmm. Where you kind of collect your thoughts. You start to kind of be real with yourself and understanding that like this this is this is your purpose this is what you want to do right yeah is there any, like are you taking a chance or a risk at anything else during this this time off or well, when I took the time off I had a, I got a day job and I was working in an office and I was going to therapy like twice a week I mean it was like a great that was a really wow. great experience when I took that time off too because I also felt like I took the power back because yeah. I've always been so focused on whatever it is I'm trying to do sure. that I made it my whole life. So then when I just stopped, mm -hmm. I was like, wow, I can walk away. Like this mm -hmm. thing that I want so badly, I can stop and the world doesn't end. So okay. then that made it me be like, oh, I can, I, it's very empowering realizing mm -hmm. that you can walk away from something that you've let be so all consumed. Yeah. So that 100%. was like a nice, and then when I went back, I had a little bit more balance, not a ton, um, but me, I miss you too. Are you listening to Taylor Strecker show still? Oh my gosh, you have a lot of love in here. Okay. I wonder if Crystal Crillier, Christine. I wonder some, if, some, somebody if said. If you're not listening, text me, tell me what's going on. Somebody said I got to go, or somebody said I got to I gotta go do homework, but I'll, I'll, I'll die for you. <laughs> You got some real fans in here. Oh, you are. So, oh, good, good, good. Simmons, yeah. Boston represent. Yeah, I was. Uh, I mean, my mom. Have you been to Boston before? I've never. I've never been to the East Coast. Really? I feel I like would, I'm losing out on life. No, I, I would say if you're going to go to the East Coast, the city I would recommend or the place I'd recommend the most would be like. It's tough because there's so many different places. Everybody but. thinks everybody thinks that I would mold in New York City. New York is great, but New York, I mean, I definitely would rather be in Arizona than, I mean, New York make, I mean, I don't, New York is amazing. Manhattan yeah. is incredible, but yeah. it's, in, it's so expensive that, hey girl, hey. So hey girl, hey. it's so, New York is so expensive that it is psychotic. Like there's no, yeah. once you, it's just nuts. Like, I don't know what well, I, well, I'm from. I'm from LA. I was born in LA. So I know what that that kind of lifestyle and culture is like. Right. I just think that like, I think more so New York would fit just kind and of New York does smell bad, yeah. Oh, does it? Damn, bad, I, yeah. I might not like I it. Mean, no, you know. <laughs> no offense. I mean you live there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's start about let okay, so your first your first uh what was the Stephen Colbert? Was that your first kind of big that was your first big Kind of. Yeah, but I, I had done one TV thing before that. I had done this thing on Fuse TV. I forget what it was called, but um, I don't. I don't even remember what it was called. But I did something on that. So I'd done a TV set, and then I did a live at Gotham, like a Axis local cable thing. Yeah. And then Colbert was like the first like national TV thing that I had done. Yeah. So that was my first big TV spot, I guess. Colbert was the first. Was the first mm -hmm. thing. Dope. Okay. So let's, we talked about it a little bit, but let's go back on that experience. How was that like for you? I mean, it was live, right? First, first and foremost, it was live. First you live know, it was, experience. it was a pretty, the, the first time I, the thing too with New York is you're around people that have been on late night, like so many times. 
So you'll see a comedian that's done late night like 15 times. So that all of a sudden starts like humanizing it a much, much more. Like if there was like a food item that you'd never seen anyone eat before, you'd be like, whoa, what's that ostrich feet or whatever. But then if if you knew so many people eating ostrich feet all the time, you'd be like, oh, okay. It's, it felt like a little bit less of like, I remember when I was in Boston, if you told me about Colbert, I would have been like, you know, that would have seemed unbelievable to me. But yeah, when I was absolutely. in New York, it felt more accessible. So I, I was I was very nervous. I remember I was moving that weekend. So I was like, literally like packing boxes, going between my apartment and mm-hmm. trying to figure out what I was going to wear. And now when I look at what I wore the first time I did that, I was wearing <laughs> red, white, and blue. And I wasn't even aware of it. The second time I did it, I got a stylist because I was like, I can never make a mistake like that again. Oh, but that very goodness. first time I got a... Um, that was that was the Nick Carter joke, right? I think that was the first like, time I did it. Was the Nick like, Carter? You were like, you're yeah, like, every, everybody thinks that I want to be like Ellen De- right, DeGeneres, right, right, right. but but right. really, right? <laughs> I want to I want to be like Nick Carter. I would love to go to that. That right? was that was classic. That was classic. So that was that was your first go around of that, right? So that was the first time so that, I ever did it, be on any. I mean, never did like a late night set on national TV, I guess. So, uh, Time Out New York has you recognized for the ten funniest women in New York City. Yeah, that was a little that was a little while ago too. But that was a good group yeah. they had. Like, um, I think Michelle Wolf was on that. Oh. Uh, Michelle Wolf. Okay. She was on. She did, she's got an HBO special. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I've heard of Michelle Wolf, but I don't think I've seen the HBO special. If you're gonna watch HBO special, um, who's the, the a special? I just watched. Well, it's not HBO. It's Showtime. I just watched Jesus Trejo has a really good H, a Showtime special. Hey, that was the last comedy. Uh, you know who I? You know who I really like that you, uh, you? I mean, you worked alongside with. It was on your Netflix special, uh, the com- the comedian lineup. That's oh yeah, yeah. Latest thing, yeah. right? Yes, yeah. Who that who's one? The, like, who didn't? Gosh. You like? No, who I'm, who I'm, who I've been following. That's like up yeah. and coming. Josh Jackson. Oh yeah, he's great. I love. He's him. great. He's funny. He's a nice guy. He just sits yeah. There, I, like, he's like in his own element. Like yeah, he's very cool. Very. He's, he's very cool, calm, and collected. If you, I, I bet I have his contact information. If you want to interview him sometime. One hundred percent. Yeah, I he's cool. I, I've been following him a lot. Yeah, Josh Jackson. I, he just like, he's very black. Yeah, African American. Yep. <laughs> but he's like he's he's kind he's real. He's can he's just like himself. I love it. He so did really you work alongside him? Right? Too. Sorry, say it again. Worked alongside him on that on that on yeah, that. Yeah. So the way they did it is they broke it up into filming. So it'd be like we would film. I love Jesus too. I'm I'm interviewing I'm I'm interviewing him today actually. Um, uh. Great. The way they had it film it, it was over four nights. So it was like we would do six people with six people per show, and then say you're doing your set, you do it two times in one night, and okay. they would like swap it out like that. And Josh and I actually filmed on the same night, so oh, we were there, oh. but we filmed on the same night. But he wasn't on. I, I remember who was before me and who was after me, and he wasn't yeah. either of those. Um, Yo. Yo, I want to get into this segment with you. Okay. All right, so so this is sound on, right? Mm-hmm. With my guest today, and I thought this would be cool to put this little thing together. So, it's called sound off. Uh oh. So what I'm gonna do is, I mean, obviously everyone knows you are lesbian, right? Yeah. Gay, whatever you want, yeah. you know, however you want to uh, identify it. So I thought it'd be cool to do this. So what I did was, is I did some of the some of the most influential and impactful uh, um, gay women, right? Okay. So what I did was, what I want you to do is, I want you to sound off to to how you feel or how okay. they've impacted you, right? I think it's I think it's pretty cool. I okay. mean, there's some pretty cool people out here. All so right. I, I don't went, want to get so myself I, in trouble, but. No, 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 no. You, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I can't yeah. be like that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no, like, yeah, like Hannah Gadsby special was awesome. Yeah. Um, she, I mean, what am I? You know, I'm obviously gonna only say positive stuff. Can I? Can I screen share this or no? I don't know how to. Do I mean, that. I'm sure it really was awesome. I didn't watch all of it. I, so. I don't know if I can screen share. I'm gonna try to do this real quick. I've never done it, but 
you know, uh, if I'm thinking of like a. There's some pretty cool people on here, though. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. Have you heard of Lena, uh, uh, Lena Wraith or Wrath? No. Oh, my God. See, that's why I got a screen share. Let me see if I can Google. I can Google. And if anyone wants to weigh in, then. Can, can you see it? it? Look, let's see. Boom. Is it? Can you see her? Oh, yes, her. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, Lena Waithe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw her speak one time at the um, at the GLAAD Awards. Yeah, yeah, she's she's great. I don't know. A, I don't know a ton about her. I mean, like, uh, Actor. great, great, great Actor. dresser show. Yeah, yeah. Lena Waithe is great. I remember whatever I saw her speak at was really awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't she wasn't like the featured speaker, sure. but she stole the show for sure. Like, who yeah. is this? oh, I remember this. Okay, so there's two feature speakers, but the award was going to Britney Spears on this particular mm-hmm. thing, and then she spoke at it. And I remember it was like, oh, no one could fo- no one could follow her acceptance speech, basically. But she, yeah, she was great. Uh, but I've never. She, met it says it says quote unquote being born gay, black and female is not a revolutionary act. Being mm-hmm. proud to be gay, black female is sure pretty powerful. Yeah, that is. Dope. Yeah, okay. and she's got some show on. Uh, oh, she's got some show on that new platform Quibi, and it's like about I forget. It's about her with like sneakers or something. Yeah. And I don't have Quibi, but I was like thinking of getting it to see what her show sure. is about. But sure, um, Kate I love McKinnon, it. I think is awesome. Okay. Kate McKinnon, Saturday yeah. Night Live. She's she great. says she's ninety eight five percent lesbian, apparently. I don't yeah. know what that means, but it probably means you know I think gender is pretty like constructed a little bit, so maybe she's just like, be trying to be open there. I think that it's she in this quote that he's sharing with me. I think it's apparent that I am a lesbian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but yeah, she's a. I mean, she's really, really. She's she inspiring. She's, Yes, she is. Uh, she, I remember I used to have this like booking agent for a while. And um, I remember he was like, oh, I also work with Kate McKinnon. And I was like, very excited about that. So how about Hannah Gatsby? Or what is it? Yeah, Gats- Gatsby. I mean, I don't want to, you know, I, you know. Okay. You can make it short. You can make it long, simple. Good Does for them matter? for. Being... We can hear what the listeners say about her. Okay, so this one right here, uh, what's her name? Gigi Gorgeous. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Looks she's good. A Canadian, she's a Canadian YouTuber, I guess. She's, she came out back in 2016. Yeah. Good yeah. for her. She looks great. Oh, I like Cynthia, Cynthia Nixon a lot. Nixon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, get, I get a kick out of Cynthia Nixon. I like, Sex, I mean, Cynthia she, Nixon, she, she ran for governor of New York. Um, wow. Which was pretty, which was, I would, I think she was like the Democratic choice. So I guess I voted for her then. Oh, did you? I think so. Yeah, I always, I liked some, I didn't think she was going to, I remember not thinking she was going to win. Um, yeah. yeah, Sex in the City Advocate. Yeah, she's a good actress. And then. Uh, oh, I love Jodie Foster. Jodie Foster. Yeah, I love Jodie Foster. She's such she's a good great actress. Spirit. She has a great spirit. Yeah. Golden you know, Globes 2013. How do you feel about like these sort of people, like you know, uh, kind of in reflection to who you are, right? As far as you know, your sexual sexuality and things like that. How do you feel about these type of people being on such a high pedestal, right? Like the Golden Globes. Well, I you know mean, I mean? Like, like, how so, does so, that how does that impact you? And like well, maybe so your for, for someone like um, Jodie Foster. I mean, she was in the closet before she made it and then she came out. So I think the only one on the list that was like out the whole time was Lena Waithe and Kate McKinnon, who also Mm -hmm. broke um, later on. You know, I don't really think about any of the people on this list too much in regards to myself because, I mean, Hannah Gadsby, yes. And that's because Hannah Gadsby, I mean, when her special, when I I saw the first, I've met her before in Australia when she was a comedian. Oh, really? Yeah, before she was pretending that she was going to quit. But, because every comedian always is like, I'm going to quit, I'm going to quit. But I remember, um, she was really funny when I met her in Australia. But I, I'll usually, I mean, I'll just think of them, like with Kate McKinnon, I, 
it see they'll seem pretty like they seem very far away to me because they're not people that I'll see. We're not like going up for the same s- stuff, you know. So I sure. usually think about someone, but but I always I love seeing people that have reached this amount of success too because then it's mm-hmm. that's when they really because everyone's always in their own lane, right? But when you can Absolutely. be when you can be in your own lane, really truly, where you're not like knocking each other out is mm-hmm. when you like actually so jane lynch i've gone up for stuff yeah. that jane lynch has got jane lynch she's a great actress like there's From things Glee? i've auditioned for before and then they're like oh jane lynch got it and i'm like yeah yeah she did <laughs> you know so you know a little bit about Glane lynch okay. yeah i think jane lynch is a great great uh great okay. actress any other of these names popping up that porsche oh lily tomlin yeah big i think she's really funny i've heard porsche de rossi is very very nice um sure. I feel like anyone anyone that I've seen so far, I've always heard like nice things about. Uh, okay. Well, I so, I don't know much about this one. Oh, Virginia Woolf. Yeah, no, yeah, she's yeah, she's definitely past our or time. Then this one. Oh yeah, Ellen. You know. Do you have a relationship with her? Are you like? Um, oh, like have we actually met? Yeah, 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 yeah. Not like a real um, relationship. No, we've never met, but I interviewed a, I interviewed a comedian who's a buddy of mine. His name's yeah. Mr. D. He's really, really funny. And sure. he has been on her show two times, and he had a wonderful experience both times on the show. Okay. I mean, I definitely, like, I've got, a, like, a relationship in my head. Not, like, <laughs> of, I just yeah. remember, you know, I, I just rem- I remember seeing her when I was little, mm-hmm. and then, and I really... I appreciate her comedy a lot. And then I've known, um, I've known people that have known her and I don't know anyone firsthand who's had like a bad experience with her, but, but at the same time, she's someone that, you know, I remember like when I started meeting people in entertainment, I'd be like, Oh, what's Ellen like? And people would be like, Oh, so I've heard people say she's tough to work with, but, but it's one of those like, like one of those things. That's been, and I always try to. That is something I always try to take with a grain of salt because we don't know necessarily what's going on. Sure. But I know the people that I've met that have worked with her directly, which is four different people, have all said very, have all been like, you know, she's very business oriented and. One hundred percent. I can't imagine how much pressure she's not under. You know. Oh yeah, for sure. And I hopefully mean, hopefully she retires quick. Fuck. The yeah. spotlights, yeah, we need somebody else. We need Emma. Right. They get in there, to, maybe no one, to, no one to even take, notice. Like, Ellen, looks that... really sh- Ellen looks short and flustered. Ellen's got pudding on her shirt today, and I'll be like, Pudding <laughs> with, with, chai, with cheese seeds or chai yeah. seeds or whatever yeah. the hell you call them. Okay. All right, I got, so I got this next segment, right? Right. Right, and what it is, it is, um, if I can get to it, um, it's pretty much what I did was, is I went to your, uh, Instagram, right. Okay. And it's pretty much the, the segment's called speak on it. Right. So okay. obviously you have a lot of fans. You probably have, you know, a, a, you got a pretty big following and people want to know what either a caption means or the picture means with more context. Right. So okay. that's, so I picked a few of them and all I want you to do is just to add more context to okay. what's going on or maybe explain what's going on. Okay. Right. Good idea. So this one was January 10th, right? January okay. 10th. <laughs> it looks like it's like a celebrity basketball game of like all comedians, maybe. Yes. You're shooting a jump shot. It looks like yeah. you're shooting a jump shot at least yeah. you're following through, but yeah. your follow through is like, halfway down yeah i didn't know how to so so, far your hair you look like you look like Dennis like you're fresh fr- a fresh yeah. out of scene a fresh scene out of like dragon ball z what's going on right here what is this so there's Tell a giant com- there's a giant comedy festival in um montreal every year it's called the just for laughs festival it's like a big festival and okay. they had a they had a comedian basketball game that was like a fundraiser so when they asked me to do it, I was like, oh, yeah, it's like a joke. You know, it's like comedians yeah. playing, who can't play basketball. Ha, ha, ha. So yeah. I get on the team and I start looking around and it's like there were people that could really play ball. Like there, there it was like however many people are on the team. I know nothing about basketball. So whatever the amount of other players are, they'd be like, oh, I played in high school or I played semi pro. And I started doing the math real quick. Like I've never played a game of basketball in my life. Ever. So okay. it was pretty. <laughs> It was rough. I only played like a little bit, but that's what that game was. So when that picture was taken, that was my girlfriend was taking that picture during the warm up. 
Yeah. So I didn't. I did take a couple shots during the game, did but you that score? was like, no. But oh, thank you. Man. you I, I trusted that that one went nah, in. No, no, no. It would have. I don't. If it was even in the direction of the basket, then that would have been nice. That's hilarious. Okay. Okay. So off to the next one. Let's see here. See, so it's saved on my phone, but like on yep. the actual internet, they're not there. Well, you know what we could do? We could switch back over to doing the Skype one. And then if you guys want to see the rest of this segment, then you just got to listen to his podcast. There you go. There you go. Boom. That's and I would how love we to play age. Jane Lynch's daughter. Jane Lynch is a great actress. Thanks, everyone, really for good. tuning in. Yeah, Appreciate thank you guys that. so much. Thanks for all the comments and all the love. Boom. That was amazing. Yeah, thank you. And then I have to go probably in like 10 minutes. Just yeah. That's something that. Yeah. Uh, Let's let's wrap it up. We'll just we'll, we'll we'll just jump right into it. I'll pull up uh pull up another one here just to knock it out real quick, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know it's crazy. I haven't yeah I haven't done Instagram live or anything like that in a long time. But look, but look how much look how much traffic and like they want to they they want to see that they love that. It's it's just a different yeah. way to interact, you know. Right. Yeah. So these aren't showing. Yeah, but it's all good. I, I think there was a couple other ones that I chose. Um, I mean, yeah, obviously we could we could just talk about. I mean, obviously you're super busy with your podcast, right? Um, I've seen. I just I've do. Seen, the, I do. Um, inside the closet, and then Emma's bunker. Now, those are the yeah. those are the two that I do now. That, so I'm not doing three of them. So for anybody who follows you, right, as uh, as a fan, right. And they discover you on Instagram, right? And they the first thing they see on your Instagram is, you know, there's side by sides, there's microphones, headphones, right, right. It's a podcast vibe. You're pushing your your podcast. So I guess my question to you is what I respect, what I respect what you do, what I respect what you do as far as like um, you know, going from being a stand-up comedian, right? Mm -hmm. To making that switch, that transitional switch is very important, especially in the time that we're in now, right? Sure. Um, what pushed you to do this? And, and Well, and I always why? loved podcasting. I mean, I always, like, love, like, I think I started doing Inside the Closet, like, two years ago, and then I used to co-host a morning show on Sirius XM one day a week, and I, co-hosting is very different from hosting. So, sure. when I, Corona was kind of the push I needed where I was, like, I mean, even in Corona, when we first went on lockdown, I reached out to this friend of mine and I was like, do you want to do a podcast together? And then she kind of, she ended up flaking on it. And then that was what made me be like, all right, I'm just going to start doing interviews mm -hmm. on my own, doing it on my own while we're under quarantine. And then mm -hmm. seeing, just seeing what I can like learn from that. And this is yeah. a way to like stay in touch with people and then present it to people. And you know what, with the word fan, I never think of it as fans. I always think of it as employers. Like I always, you know, like it's like a lot of yeah. it's like employers. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Well, they, I mean, anybody who like follows what you do and appreciates what you do, I'm sure they're in tune and they're they're intrigued about what you're doing. So I think that I think it's dope. I, I love I what you're doing. I've, 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 the what is that? The you do you host in the closet or in the closet, right? So I co-host that. So I co-host with, that one once a week, and then Emma's bunker. Mateo. With Mateo Lane. Yeah, yeah, he was on the um, the comedy lineup, too. And then, but Emma's Bunker, I've just been putting out myself. It's totally, it's different. Yeah. It's very different. It's a lot of learning, you know, and I, love I have it. someone help me with the editing, but I still will, like, mm -hmm. kind of try to edit it, and it's just a different. We're going to get you right. We're going to get you right. I promise. Appreciate so that. what so so for all so for for all the listeners, uh, what's what's next for you? I mean, what 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 are some of the plans that you got? Obviously, you know, with us being in quarantine, we're limited to a lot. You're staying sure. busy pushing out content with podcasts, something that you enjoy doing. Uh, what can we anticipate from you? What's next? You know, so I was going to be what I had been planning on was trying to get an hour together to sell an hour. But that just is like totally shelved now. And then I had yeah. been auditioning a lot, but then that's been really shelved too. So what I've been trying to focus on besides the podcasting is just writing like a scripted show. And then oh. I've got, I am on a show now on True TV at 10 o'clock, but it, um, 
nice. I, I thought I was going to come into it in the fifth episode. They just aired the fifth episode, and I wasn't in it, so I don't I don't know exactly what's going on there. But I am on that show. Maybe you maybe know, it's the sixth. Now. Yeah, that's what I keep We're telling just myself. To it's gonna be the sixth. <laughs> this is gonna a, be the seventh. The show's in over. Tune on that. Yeah, I want to see. It's, it's a reality. It's a reality show, so I'm not acting in it. But it was a good. That was like a good learning experience, and I got a producer credit on that. So that was a oh. good learning how to do that too. Oh. So where can the people find you? I know you have a website. Yeah, it's have Emma Insta- Comedy. Com, com, and then if you go to Instagram, it's Emma Wilman, and then Emma's Bunker is what I. I've really been trying to um, focus. And that's on, on YouTube. That's on YouTube, and then I on iTunes too. Okay. But no. uh, Instagram is where I usually post the most. And then recently, besides us going live, I haven't been on it in like a week and ten, maybe like ten days. Anytime you want to go live with me, let me know. Okay. Yeah, I will go live with you again. Absolutely. Like, cause yeah. I, I just have been. It is. It's been hard to know what to post. You know what I mean. Well, I've only been live a few times, Have but you? I do know I do know that it's important, yeah, and and, and it helps with it helps with the overall engagement. Right. Uh, Instagram and it's funner gives to, you. It's more fun to go live with someone else. I think. Yeah. Because like yeah, if yeah. you're live by on your own, I feel like an asshole. But if I'm live with someone else, <laughs> you know what I mean? for sure. Yeah, let me know. We definitely okay, can awesome. do that. Come on the show. I'll come on the show. I'll come on That's to your great. show. Whatever yeah, you want to do. I would love sure. that. Well, let me ask you this before we wrap it up. Yep. What can, what have you, what have you took or 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 taken from this overall sit down with me? I guess. Oh, just it's just so interesting to talk to <laughs> people that are so at peace with um, having good habits. I mean, you know, you're like you're not in the minor, you're not in the majority there. Yeah. So like someone that is at peace with being like, you know, I just have trained myself to not think and instinctively do the right thing to me is like sounds totally crazy because normally you know like a foreign like, language yeah like my friend robin <laughs> that we always are talking about oh i was gonna do this but then i messed up and i did that and i was you know it's like we're always like it's like a constant thing of like trying to get back on track with that so it's a very it's sure. a good reminder to to remember that that's possible to do and it's and important it's, and, it, and it's important yeah for sure yeah. well i have definitely took a lot from you thank you i appreciate it anytime i one i 100 appreciate you from yeah coming thank on. you so much and let me know oh, you know what else you. i took away it's so funny when people tell you about the comedy of yours that they've seen because I'll, I'll forget i almost forget some of that stuff yeah. that's there. you know <laughs> what i mean and then sometimes i'll talk to people and i'll be like oh in this interview you said this and they'll be like or I'll say, oh, you one time you said this, and they'll go, how do you know that? I'm like, well, you said it on a... Yeah, like, no, uh, no. I read it. You, I mean, you put out... You do right. so many stand-ups. You go from... You go on tour. You go from city to city. Right. Like People forget they put stuff yeah. out. So I, mean, I got like, I heard it from you, but... I got to remind you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, 100%. It was such a great conversation. Yeah, thank uh, you. And let me know when this is out, and I'll like retweet it and stuff. For sure. Retweet it. <laughs> I mean, no, not retweet. I'll be <laughs> retweet it. I'll retweet it. You're you're catching up. We're all catching, catching up. up. Absolutely. Hey, yeah, well, I appreciate you. you. Uh, yeah, good anytime. luck to you. Um, I wish the best for you. Likewise. And uh, yeah, keep 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 after it. Likewise. Thank you. Absolutely. Yo, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think about the interview. Make sure that you smash that like button. Hey, again, all the details are in the description for Emma Wilman. All her content down below. Make sure you follow her. Check her out. Super funny, like I said, super talented. Uh, She's got a lot in store, a lot coming up next. So make sure you stay in tune. Uh, Sound on, everybody. We got more episodes coming, so stay tuned. And we out.